This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2018 Ram Promaster City Tradesman SLT. Up front is a 2.4 liter inline 4 and down below is a 9 speed automatic transmission. Now, if you haven't checked it out already, I recently reviewed a Ford Transit Connect, which is the direct competitor to this vehicle. So, please go check out that review if you're in the market for a vehicle like this. I think it'd be interesting to see the differences, but let's get back to that 2.4 liter inline four. Well, it makes 178 horsepower, 174 foot pounds of torque, and gets you 21 miles to the gallon in the city and 28 miles to the gallon on the highway, which isn't horrible, but city driving, it could be better because this is the ProMaster City. This is the smallest van that they make, and so, I wish that it did have a little bit better miles to the gallon in the city. However, it is a little multi-air 2.4 liter, so we're out here on the test track. We'll see what it can do. All right, uh, 2.4 liter. You know, if you would have told me even a year ago that I will have done two acceleration tests in two different panel vans, uh, I wouldn't have believed you, but here we are. All right. A little bit of tire squeal. Up to six grand. And that's it. Uh, it's not fast. It gets up and goes. I mean, of course, I am completely unloaded right now. So maybe with cargo, it's not going to be great. But it's not bad. It's not the slowest thing in the world. It'll get up and do things if you ask it to. And that's all you really need out of these panel vans. As long as they can do it, you'll be fine. Like I said, Paraduit is a nine speed automatic transmission, which is kind of interesting to me because this is a fleet vehicle. This is a vehicle that has to be reliable. There is no other option. If a business is going to purchase one of these, it has to start and work and drive every single morning. And when it does break, it has to be easy to fix and easy to maintain. Those adjectives normally aren't paired with a nine speed automatic transmission. So, I'm very curious to see how these hold up. This car is only two years old, so we don't really have too much stress tests to really look at and go off of. But however, I am loving it. It, it feels good. It's a good, solid transmission. Nothing really to report here, which in this case, no news is good news. Last but not least, of course, the ProMaster is front wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. We don't have a whole lot to go through up here, but we will hop in back and take a look at the cargo space, which I think is going to be one of the most important parts of the ProMaster. So in front of me, I have four gauges. On the left is my speedometer. In the center is my fuel and coolant temperature. And on the right is my tachometer. As well as down below, I do have a little information center. It does have the date which I really, really like in fleet vehicles because you're gonna be doing a lot of paperwork. Odds are you're gonna be doing a mileage log and you have it right there. Right under that is your odometer, which I absolutely love. And then outside temperature, time of day, and what gear you are in. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my phone options for the center radio. And on the right, I have my cruise control options. Very, very nice. For a fleet vehicle, again, you know, this is something that they had to pump out numbers rather than, you know, it's quantity based. This is a pretty nice steering wheel, all things considered. To the left of me, I just have a vent. I don't have any sort of headlights or dimmer switches that's actually on a stalk behind the steering wheel. Then on the door, I do have my power windows and a very interesting locking mechanism. So in order to lock the door, you just push the handle down. And to open the door, you pull the handle up. Very interesting. I haven't seen this sort of mechanism in a car. You know, the third generation Mazda RX-7 has a handle sort of similar to this, but you lock it like any other door. This, this is new. This is unique. Listen. Very, very interesting. And the passenger side is like that as well. Moving on to the center, I do have a very small display. However, it is pretty clear. It's not like someone just stuck a Nintendo DS behind some plastic. It actually feels and looks like a nice legitimate screen. And I like that a lot. That is very, very big for me. 
I can do USB in as well as aux in. And if I hit more, I can look at the rear camera. This is very, very nice because this, as you can see behind me, this is a panel van. And so you can't see out of it. There's no windows in the back. So I can turn on the backup camera and just leave it on. This is so incredibly smart and it has little spaces so you can kind of gauge how far you are. I could just leave this up all the time and see directly behind me. That is such smart thinking for a cargo van like this. I absolutely love that. Down below that, I do have my menu buttons, my hazard button, traction control on and off, and my defroster, which... <laughs> that's actually a button for my rear defroster, which uh, doesn't seem necessary on this particular one, but uh, I guess I have it. Then I have my climate controls, very basic here. However, they work, they're very tactile, they feel good. That's all I could really say about them. Then I do have my aux and USB in. That is for the radio, so I can plug in my iPhone, Android, Zoom, anything I want, I can plug in. Then we have the shifter. This is a pretty standard Mopar, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram shifter. I mean, I've seen it in a bunch of other vehicles. It's fine. Like I said, it's paired to that nine speed automatic. And so it's fine. It, it feels good. It has a nice solid clunk into gear and I can't really complain about it too much. The center console also has two 12 volt outlets, which I love that Dodge does this. I don't know why other people don't do this. They put a key on it. So these outlets will only work when the car is on and not work off the battery. If they worked off the battery, then Chrysler would put a battery logo on it. So smart, so easy, and these are positioned very, very well. You and a passenger can charge anything your heart desires. Now, moving on to the seats. The seats are hard. They are very hard. They are built to last. This is supposed to get your stuff where it needs to go in the next 200,000 miles. This is supposed to be a rugged, long-lasting vehicle, and so the seats are hard because of that. They won't wear and tear over the life of the car which is nice, but sitting down, it's not super comfortable, but you know, it's not a Rolls Royce either. Speaking of seats, we don't actually have back seats, but we do have a very large rear cargo area. And so we'll talk about that. All right, so we're around the back of the ProMaster City. Thought it'd start off back here. Big grab handle, I like that. Very easy to grab. Open that up and then, oh, second lever here. So, I mean, this is the extent, this is very easy for loading. I like how it has the bigger door and then the smaller door, um, but actually we can get in here. Not enough room to actually stand up. Um, it feels like there's less room than the transit in terms of standing up area. However, I mean, just, I'll get back out here. 131.7 cubic feet of room. I will put the Transit and whatever Nissan makes um, of the same year up on the screen in terms of cargo room. I just noticed that there's a little vent on the cup holder on the back. Cargo room is decent. We'll hop around the side. First of all, you got to close small door first, big door second. But uh, I really like that handle. That's a good handle. Coming around the side here. Nice sliding door. Come in here. And obviously, this is the back. So, pretty nice. Don't really have much else to say. I like the fact that I have some shelving up there. That is nice. However, I wish the ceiling was a little bit taller, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Now we have to talk about the looks. It's a white windowless van. It's not the best look socially, but I think it actually looks decent. I like the curviness of it. I think it looks modern. I think it looks almost like if you deleted some stuff and changed some stuff, it almost looks like it could be in the movie iRobots, just slightly, just if you modified it just a little bit. However, it's still a ProMaster van, so it's not the best looking thing in the world, and I don't think it's gonna win any design contests. Last but not least that I wanted to talk about with this particular van is the fact that it is a Ram ProMaster. This is not a Dodge Ram ProMaster. Now Dodge and Ram, I have realized that some people don't know that Dodge used to, it used to be the Dodge Ram. 
Now it's just Dodge and then Ram are two separate companies, even though they're sold at the exact same dealerships and owned by the same people. They split in this year. And so this is a Ram. I just find that so interesting because I realize that a lot of my viewers are a little bit younger than me and sometimes a lot a bit younger than me. And it makes me feel old, but they don't realize they don't even know that Dodge and Ram used to be together. They broke up like a Ross and Rachel situation. Who knows? Will they get back together? We don't know. I like actually driving this little van and I'm going to compare this a lot to the Ford Transit that I drove. I like driving that van too. These are nice little vans. If you're looking at a Ford Transit Connect or you're looking at a Ram Promaster City, I honestly can't really sway you in either direction. And here's the reason for that. It's all going to come down to the deal. This is a fleet vehicle and odds are a company will buy one or buy two or buy five or buy 15 as a group. And so really the only distinguishing factor between buying this or buying a Ford Transit Connect is the deal you can get. That's it. If you live in an area with a very prominent Ram dealer, go with that. You could get it serviced right in your area and you'll probably get a good deal on it. If you live in an area with a very prominent Ford dealer, go with a Ford Transit Connect. You can get it serviced there. You'll get a good deal there. That's just the way the cookie crumbles with fleet vehicles. And so honestly, my final closing thought is, I don't know why, but I like driving these sorts of cars. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for letting me take out their Ram ProMaster. This really gives me a great perspective into the ProMaster versus Ford Connect. The Ford Connect was also from Toyota, so check out that video after you finish this one. But I cannot thank Toyota of Naperville enough. They're absolutely awesome. Their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.